The kidney stones are extremely common, affecting up to 10% of the population. Clearly, there are genetic causes as well as um, environmental causes that contribute to kidney stone disease. A relatively small number of kidney stones are due entirely to hereditary causes. Uh, in these cases, the stones tend to come at an earlier age. The patients with hereditary causes uh, often experience stones from an early age and require frequent hospitalizations and procedures. They're at, risk for kidney damage. They're at risk for kidney damage and even chronic kidney disease. There's often a risk of permanent kidney damage and even kidney failure and early death in, in these individuals. Because the disorders are very rare, they've been difficult for physicians to recognize and to study. This in turn has slowed progress towards effective treatments. It also increases the risk for misdiagnosis or diagnosis late in the course of the disease. In turn, patients may uh, experience unnecessary procedures, harmful treatments, or even accelerated and unnecessary loss of kidney function. Uh, the Rare Kidney Stone Consortium was formed by investigators at Mayo Clinic, New York University, as well as Landspital University located in Iceland uh, in order to help address some of these problems studying these rare kidney stone disorders. Uh, the four diseases included in this consortium are dent disease, primary hyperoxaluria, um, cystinuria, as well as APRT deficiency. The Rare Kidney Stone Consortium is funded by the National Institutes of Health. Uh, each disease in the consortium has its own registry. Affected patients and their families can choose to be included in the registry. Information is gathered regarding the age of onset, treatment, lab results, and outcome. In this way, we can learn more about the diseases and study what treatments have worked uh, best for these patients. Importantly, all of this data is analyzed anonymously and personal information is never shared. Consortium investigators are available as a resource for patients and their families and as well as for any physicians for any questions that people may have. The consortium also organizes clinical trials so that we can learn more about the diseases and to test new and promising treatments, determining how well they might work. Dr. Lada, Bier, Lasik, and I are responsible for the dent disease registry that's part of the consortium. Uh, these are especially exciting times for people uh, studying dent disease. Uh, the disease itself was described first in the 1960s by Dr. Uh, Dent and Dr. Friedman, and since that time it's been named for Dr. Dent. Uh, most of patients with dent disease have increased amounts of protein in the urine as well as high levels of calcium. Uh, they tend to get uh, kidney stones. Uh, they also can develop kidney failure as well as weak bones as a result of these problems, and they may be at an increased risk for fractures. It's known that two separate Genes are responsible for dent disease named uh, CLCN5 and OCRL1. Uh, for the most part, only boys are affected since both of these genes are located on the X chromosome. Both genes are involved in processing a protein inside of cells. We're learning more and more about what these genes do, and hopefully this will eventually help us to think of better treatments. We re recently developed a Facebook page for dent disease. We hope that this will be a place where uh, patients and families and people that care for dent disease patients can get together and share information. Uh, we're also off to a great start with the dent disease registry. Uh, we encourage all patients and families to become involved in the registry and, um, and enroll their information if at all possible. Um, we look forward to working together to improve the lives of all patients with dent disease. Thank you.